Welcome to another video of Snipe IT. In this video, we will do complete configuration of Snipe IT. In my previous video, I have explained you how to install Snipe IT into your Ubuntu Linux server. So we have done the installation on Ubuntu 20.04. If you have missed that video, I have provided the link in the card above. If the Snipe IT is already installed in your environment and you want to configure it now, just stay tuned to see this video till the end. On dashboard, you can see all the total assets, total licenses, total accessories, total consumables, and you can add the asset, new asset, new accessory, new consumable. And from here, you can see other options as well. But before we start the data entry, let me first of all, take you to the administration panel here. So this is the main admin panel. In branding, you can choose a site name. We will be changing the header color if you want to change it, the logo, logo here and I'll be using email logo you want to change. You can change the email logo also here and favicon also. Now in general setting, multi-company support, if you have multi-company, require the signature when you will be assigning the assets to users. So they will have to sign it using their mouse or using the touch, touch screen. Results per page, for example, 25 assets per page or 25 list uh, items per page. And user license agreement, you can put it configure the email once you do the test it will send the email successfully uh, in general set setting everything is done and user license agreement back to the security in case you want to enable the two-factor authentication you can use it for selected users or you can use it for all users now groups right now no group is defined here for example if i want to create a group for asset manager so this person will be having only access to the assets but he will not be able to delete it we have created the groups now we'll go back to localization notifications if you want to get the notifications by email you will see who will be getting the notifications by alerts by administrator Licenses expiring, when, he'll be, when you'll be getting the emails, any inventory level for the consumables, when you'll be getting the email, what is the frequency, you can do that as well. Audit interval, default interval is 12 months and audit warning threshold is 14 days. So you'll be getting the warning that audit has to be done for a specific asset. Then you can get the notification by email. So if you're already using Slack, so you can create a specific channel on Slack and then you can start using it. Asset tags, you can enable auto-generated asset tags, which will automatically use the incremental numbers for the asset tags. The barcodes, so how you wanna have barcodes, if you want to have square barcodes or rectangular barcodes, do you wanna have QR code or only data metrics? I'll be using QR code also. And now we'll be moving to the labels. If you have label printer and you have specific label printer design or specific label printer sizes or label printer settings, so you can do the label printer setting here. Um, uh, what type of uh, information you want to print on label asset name asset tag if you want to have the asset name as well the model number also company name also you can choose those as well the LDAP connection if you're using LDAP in your environment you will enable the LDAP and uh, if, if this particular installation is done on the LDAP server you can use it also otherwise you can provide your LDAP uh, IP address in this format uh, and then if you are using a TLS for in with LDAP server i will not be using tls so i'll be just ignoring this and then if you have ldap uh, binding uh, you will be providing the user id and password with which you want to bind your ldap server with uh, snipe it installation you can do that here you'll be using the binding base so you will be using for example dc is equal to sync bricks and dc is equal to sync bricks and dc is equal to uh, com and if you have any organization unit, you can use that organization group is equal to uh, staff. So staff information will be pulled. So you can use the default LDAP filter here. So LDAP version, you can check the LDAP version of your Windows Active Directory server. Uh, usually for you Windows 2012 server, it accepts two and three both versions. So I'll be using three. And once everything is ready, test the LDAP connection here. Go to the people and LDAP sync. The moment you do LDAP sync, all the users will be populated 
Finally, the SAML, if you're using SAML for the authentication, you will use that. Backups, now I have configured everything here. I'll generate the backup. Now first backup is created. Uh, login attempts, you can see who, who has logged in at what time and what date and from where. If you are using any API for the authentication, you can see that. And purge, if you have deleted anything, you can delete uh, permanently from the database by typing delete and purge. So it will delete all the contacts, assets, whichever you have deleted. Now we are ready to start adding the people and the assets. So here is the interface as we have we have been here into the administration panel. I'll go to my home page here. Home page is giving me dashboard. Here on the top side, you will see uh, this is your profile page. You can edit your profiles and if you have requested any assets or you can see whatever assets are assigned to you. Anything is assigned to you in terms of accessories, consumables, software or assets. You will see everything here. This is for the user also as you are admin. So you are user also. So you will be able to see all the assets which are assigned to you. So here you can see all the list here. You can create uh, the new asset by clicking the uh, menu here or once you are into the list in list, you can create the new asset from here also. Otherwise, you can go from here and choose the assets. Click on assets. It will show you all the assets and then you can add the asset. So let me begin with the demo data here. See the sample file here. So this is the user's sample file, the sample accessories, sample consumables, sample licenses and sample assets. So these are users. I'll be just processing it and choose the import type. Import type is users. It will say successfully import. Okay. Similarly, we can go for the import here, import option here. Let me delete this option here and importing the assets process it now we'll click on import so it will start importing the users okay now you can see all the assets has been added here this is the list you have total list of all the assets and some of the assets are deployed some of the some of assets are pending some of assets are lost it was deployed to this person 431 so asset has 431 appearing in its uh, serial number so we can see yeah this is the asset so if I go to this particular asset tag, we can see that asset is pending right now. So what are these statuses? So there are various statuses. Pending means that you are configuring something right now and asset is not ready to be deployed to the user. So all the assets which are not yet ready to be deployed to the user, these will be in pending state. All the assets which are already deployed, so you will see all the deployed. And all the assets which are ready to be deployed, the assets are configured, everything is working fine. Now you have kept them ready for the user to be deployed. Undeployable assets are those assets having some issues and you cannot give it to any user. So these are undeployable assets. Pending assets, when a user gives you asset, you might be making some installation, you might be configuring it for the users. So these are actually pending. But undeployable are those assets which will not be uh, fulfilling the user's needs. And some of the assets which are already obsolete, operating system is obsolete or hardware is obsolete or license is obsolete. So you can put them into archives. So the asset is requestable. For example, if you have a portable projector and people can uh, request for that portable projector, these assets are the requestable assets. New category is laptop, type is asset. An end user license agreement. Maybe I want the people to accept the user license agreement once we assign the laptop. Save. So laptop as a category is created, but there is no asset into this. So I'll be just going into my assets, list all assets, create an asset, asset. And there are components also that can be assigned to the asset. For example, if you have installed a component, this component is or GPU. You can create a new category here, graphics card, which is installed into two graphics serial number location any location you can choose and save it check out and you can assign it to a specific asset or desktop is there so you can choose this desktop and assign this particular gpu to this it can be assigned here now if i check out you can see another there are two quantities were there in these components one quantity is already assigned and one is remaining so if you click here you will see whom it has been assigned and if you take that component back you can click check in got back from user and click check in so two assets are back again here similarly you can do for everything here for consumables suppose these are your consumable for all your assets items so you can just check in and check out from here so these are all available in your stocks suppose you check out and this 
these consumable can be checked out to the users suppose i am checking it out to myself and mentioned here that this this is the remarks and check out and now if you want to do the audit of asset so you will just simply go to assets uh, click on action and audit and on the which location you have audited this is the location and click audit this is the audit that you have done and if you go here to the home screen you can see all the logs here that audit for this particular asset is done even if you go into the asset so you can see the history of that asset and you can see that its audit was done on this particular date when it was created who was uh, all the history of the asset whom it was assigned from whom it was given back from whom it is given to everything is available all the history is maintained for the assets similarly if you want to upload any file you can upload the file here by clicking uh, on upload if you have any attachment any invoice any purchase order anything related to the asset you can do that and if there is any maintenance planned or maintenance done for the asset for example if there is maintenance i'll choose the supplier maintenance type is maintenance or upgrade or uh, uh, pad testing or calibration or software support or hardware support whatever is done for example repair is done so i must say that repair of motherboard and then start date and end date this date was done and what was the repair charges and click on save we can always see the history of this asset that this asset has these many licenses these many components these many sub assets within the asset and then the history and then here maintenance log so you can see all the maintenance and then all the files which are uploaded here many options are there you can explore these options by yourself it is very simple to use if you have any comments any feedback any questions any suggestions or if you need any help for the installation testing or implementation you can contact me on my email address i have provided the link in the description below click the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and avoid missing any latest videos